welcome to the first and last podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Vale. And Sophie Pearson. Today we are going to be discussing the book Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbu. And basically what this book is about is it's all about the American dream and, you know, trying to reach the American dream. So basically, Jende Jonga, he's a Cameroonian immigrant who is living in Harlem, New York, and he's come to the United States to provide a better life for himself, his wife, Nenny, and their six-year-old son, whose name is Leomi. And basically, this the setting, the time period is 2007, and um, he gets a job as a chauffeur for Clark Edwards, who is a senior executive at Lehman Brothers. And you know, it just it just talks about how they all interact. Um, you know, an immigrant. It just shows like an inside, in-depth look at uh, what an immigrant has really um, experienced in in America in the process of, you know, trying to become a citizen and and, and all those types of things. So. So. Johnny, do you think it's, uh, you think it's possible to, you know, achieve the American dream, you know, today, 2020? today's society well uh, to be honest i'm thinking that you know possibly before covid hit you know it was it's it's definitely more achievable than back then because you know that was there was a lot of racism back then and possibly even more now but I definitely think that it's, you know, still achievable nowadays, um, considering how, how many, how many possibilities there are in doing so. Yeah. I mean, you can literally work at McDonald's for, and make $10 an hour. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, in comparison to, like. You know, back in like the nineties and you would make like a dollar fifty. So yeah. I I also think it's like you know and we have technology now, more people are more tech technological, you know, they're they're more savvy in that aspect and you know, even even the immigrants children, like like I don't know, like in America, you know, we're we're so privileged that, you know, a seven year old could have, you know, like the newest iPhone and stuff like that. So I just think it's it's funny how, um, like, you know, you never know what people overseas know in comparison. Yeah, yeah, especially how different the lifestyles over there are, like, in yeah. different countries, considering the lifestyles in America are, you know, uh, w- you know, you work, you you live you can do like you can drive around in a car you could be a youtuber and make millions of dollars like david dobrik yeah who 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 is an immigrant from yeah from slavica or whatever the country's called (laughs) slovakia Slovakia. yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) so basically um in this in this book the the american family you know they they've already made it you know they're they're like super rich and they're super wealthy but the the jonga family um what i want to compare and talk about is the different lifestyles with like the wives nanny and cindy cindy's Mm -hmm. you know the the American wife and Nini's the Cameroonian wife. So, how how are their 
both of their lives way different, Sophie. Uh, well, you know, you know, as you said before, Nani is the Cameroonian and Cindy is, is the American, and I, I think they're, I, they're just so different. I feel, um, you know, and you can uh, look at it from a financial standpoint. You know, Nani, they're, they're obviously a lot poorer than Cindy is. I feel like Cindy kind of, Cindy, you know, she also came from poverty. Uh, she was complaining about that to uh, to Nenny uh, in the summer. Um, but we'll get into that later. But basically, Nenny is super, super hardworking and is like this really traditional, you know, she has this really traditional set of values and she's really hardworking. You know, she's, she's a mother and she's um, coming home at the end of a long, long school day trying to get her degree. She comes home and, you know, she still cooks dinner. She still helps her son with her homework. You know, she's being the the the, the caring, loving wife. And while also, you know, just constantly having to think about, you know, am I going to be able to pay rent next month? Because she's not working. Only the, the male... You know, her her husband is the only person having money. So it's just, I feel like she's really, really stressed out in comparison to Cindy. Cindy, her husband Cindy, is... on the other hand, you know, she's a party animal. You know, yeah, she, she goes is. Out she, and she literally has a drug a addiction. She, she drinks, does drugs and stuff. And yeah. I feel like with money... Um, she just blows it. You know, you, when you have a bunch of money... Are you happy? Cause I mean, I don't think so. When you when you were more so like you know on the poorer side, then you know that's all you want. You wanna you think that's gonna be make you happy and stuff. That's but, what Cindy did. Cindy was poor and she yeah. she thought, oh, when I get rich and and all this stuff, I'm gonna be so happy. But in retrospect, she's actually miserable. More so than Nenny is. Nenny and Nenny has family. She has she's appreciating the little things in life. Cindy is over here, you know, crying because her her husband who is a senior executor executive at the at his company is just like working too hard. He's he's he has many mistresses mistresses. You know, he has he goes to, you know, hotels and you know he sleeps with different different women and she's just miserable. Her her sons don't even want to be around Oh, it's it's so different. Yeah. I, it's in, it's insane. So to summarize, Nenny and Cindy are different from a financial standpoint, and but in like in regards to happiness, I feel like Nenny, despite being you know broke, she's she's still happy. She still has her family to 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 be proud of and to be happy of and, and cindy just has nothing you know she has money money doesn't give her happiness and it doesn't give her love from her husband or her sons it just you know she, she has a drug addiction yep yep what do you think the 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 comparison between you know clark and jen day is so, and how they provide for their families i mean you know, they both, they both, in a sense, work together. Jinday works for Clark, and Clark's Jinday's boss, you know. So, yeah. they definitely have that, you know, work relationship going on, and I feel like it's a good bond to have with, like, your colleagues, especially mm -hmm. your boss, except... I'm not I'm not sure, you know. They they have conversations in their car when they're going places, you know. Um Cindy actually wanted Jinde to spill the beans, if you will. Yeah. About Clark because she had a feeling Clark was, you know, going out and seeing other women yeah. and in fact he was, but Jinde had that relationship with Clark that he actually told Clark about it and then Clark decided you know tell her this tell her that just never mention this or you know when we go 
across the bridge or something and you know that's what Jinde did because you know he's his boss and he doesn't want to get fired because he was in that moment where if he felt as if he if he upset Clark then he wouldn't job. have a job anymore so yeah yeah I agree with you I think they're I think they're both you know hard-working people they're both like family men like you see Clark actually does care about his family when when uh, Vince tells them that he's you know he's going to India he's gonna be you know the spiritual leader or whatever and you can see that he's actually like really sad about it and he's like just like you know heartbroken because he loves his family but I think his relationship with his wife is just too broken that you know all he does is he's he's he's, he's married to his wife and Jen Day is, you know, he's starting to get, you know, into where he just like works all the time, kind of. But yeah, I think they're just both really hardworking. I mean, Jen Day really wants to provide for his family. He really wants his family to have a better life. And yeah, I don't know. Alrighty, well, I feel like we should get back after this short break after hearing that welcome back to the podcast we have jeremiah now what's up would you like to talk about the Edwards family and their lifestyles and how it embodies the American dream? Oh, uh, uh, sure. So, uh, when I think about the Edwards family and how it embodies the American um, like they they're very successful and Clark, you know, he has a very successful job, a big paying job. And um from the outside it seems like they're wealthy. And basically most people who come to America and looking for um just being wealthy and being able to provide and live in a high-end lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of people, especially like um, immigrants and stuff, I was type of American dream for them. Yeah, so basically, like, um, people who aren't from America, they are are typically from, you know, third world countries where like everything's pretty much bad and mm. then uh when they look at America they see like, you know, you can go there, be super successful in life, be super rich, make it and be able to afford anything for your family, you know, take care of your family and live Better a life, yeah. very positive life yet when it comes down to it and you look at the Edwards family you know um their sons they don't they don't like their parents and um the Edwards family you know they specifically embody the American dream because they're super successful but like it, it does come with like some cons because like they're all focused on like money making money making and yet you have cindy the wife going out doing drugs drinking clark is you know he's he's uh Jeez. going places you know hooking up with other women behind yeah. cindy's back and then you have uh the sons one of them in which he he just does not want to follow his parents path in life because Clark wants 
his son to be super successful and then you know eventually take over his spot at his job but his son doesn't want to do that so he he ends up wanting to look somewhere else other than america and go out you yeah. know to india and find happiness because he's not he's not really feeling that in america with his family so mm-hmm. mm. and then johnny did you want to like kind of talk a little bit about um you know the author and, and her story and how it relates to the book yeah so um for the real life person uh the author Mbalo Mbu. So, um, most people wouldn't know this unless, you know, they did their research after reading Behold the Dreamers, but, uh, the author was actually an immigrant from America or from the same place, Limbe, Cameroon, in 1981. Mm-hmm. She was born and she was uh, wanting to come to America after completing her undergraduate and graduate studies. And she basically created this book in, in New York. And in 2014, she signed a million dollar deal with a company for her debut book. Behold the Dreamers, and it got published in 2016. And basically, she came she came to America around the same time as the as the Jongas in the book in near 2000s 2006, you know, and uh. It was during. It was also during the Great Recession, so money was tight and everything. So yeah. Mhm. Kind of her experiences were put in the book and translated through the jungles. And yeah. Even though characters. she, you know, she lost her one of her jobs. She after that she decided to write a book about you know coming to america and that's what she did and she basically turned put her life in to a book in a sense but with you know different other characters characters. and stuff and it pretty much highlights um the american dream and what she did to come to america and get where she is right now. Mhm. So she achieved the American dream. Most definitely. All right. Well, so we all like to ask you a question. Mhm. What would be your definition of the American dream? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think my definition of the American dream is just like pretty much kind of like what everybody else's is. Like you just pursuing a better life, getting out of like, like the people from third world countries or wherever they're immigrating from, they obviously came here for a reason. They came here to to be successful or to get away from whatever bad situation they were in. And so I think the American dream just is about success and happiness and just doing whatever it takes to achieve your your goal and your dream. Like if you want to be a writer, then... You can come here and you can be a writer. You can gain experience from 
different cultures mm-hmm. and different types of people that have made it. So that's my American dream. What is what is your definition of the American dream, Jeremiah? Um I would definitely say it's more it's more like Edwards, like what happened with the Edwards family just without, you know, all the drinking and suicide and stuff like that. But um it's really just you know, just um I guess when I have kids and stuff like that, just being able to provide for them. Um and just whatever job I have or anything I do, I just wanna be happy. And then I also want to contribute to the community and do things like that. Just make sure that everyone's around me that is really happy, my family, my friends, and just live a life with no regrets. I would say that's my American dream. I like that. Johnny, what about you? Well, mine would... Um, not necessarily, you know, become rich, but like, um, pursue happiness because, you know, money is everything. And I feel like if, if you really searched to become rich, then I guess that's a way of happiness for some other people. But for me, you know, it, it's, it has to be just living your best life you know not caring what um what financial state you're in just having the best time of your life yeah Mm, how's it going all right anything else is that a wrap i guess Oh, uh, I think so. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to our podcast, aka Miss Avenia. And Shout out, Ms. remember, Avenia. Miss Avenia, you're the greatest teacher. Um, <laughs> this is super. This is a fun project we did, and this is the first and last podcast. Signing out.